welcome back, everyone. It is clear to me that everyone is talking about the Biden cartel scandal. I promise you, arguments across the nation between friends and family are unfolding over these allegations as we speak. My guess is even you at home talked about it with someone today, right? So how is it when I look at Twitter and what's, quote, trending on Twitter, the Hunter Biden email debacle does not even make the list of its top 30 big stories. That's an impossibility. You know what did make the list? Trump China bank account, a New York Times hit piece that claims Donald Trump has previously undisclosed bank account in China. That's the big story that a billionaire has a foreign bank account. Borat even makes the list on Twitter, even Carrie Fisher's birthday. So do you see what is at play here? If it's a story negative about the president, it will be given top billing. If it is negative about Joe Biden, you will never see it on Twitter. Here to discuss all this is Trump's senior legal advisor, Jenna Ellis. We also welcome executive director for the National Diversity Coalition for President Trump, Bruce Lavelle, to the program. Welcome to the both of you. Thanks so hey, much. Thanks and hey, me. <laughs> all right, Jenna, let's start with you. Carrie Fisher's birthday and nothing about Hunter Biden? This is just so ridiculous. I mean, you have, uh, you're right, that the the media, big tech, the Democrats, they're all colluding to keep relevant information that is harmful to Joe Biden, helpful to President Trump, away from the American people. And yet, Twitter will trend anything that is completely, you know, totally irrelevant, but remotely possibly against the president. And, you know, they blame this just on algorithms and they say, oh, hey, you know, we're hands off. We're not the arbiter of truth, but clearly they're the arbiters of speech and they're the arbiters of the content that they want the American people to see. And so this is really should and should be shocking and frightening to the American people to see how much big tech is actually influencing the stories in the media under the false pretense that they're not a publisher. This is why so many people, including Republicans in the Senate, are saying that Section 230, which grants immunity to these platforms, needs to be repealed because they can't have their cake and eat it too. They can't say, we're not a publisher, we're not liable for third-party content, yet they are clearly trying to manipulate the information and the speech that they want you to see and prefer. Yeah, and, and let me just yeah, make it clear for everybody at home, because it can get very complicated. Anything on that website that may be a comment or anything like that, typically they're not held responsible for. And they have immunity for comments in the comment section. They're not a publisher. If you tweet something, that has to change. Bruce Lavelle, they are now putting warnings about what's legitimate, what's not legitimate, all of that. It's got to change. Congress has to do something to take away that immunity. Yeah, well, you know, thanks for having me and great uh, comments, Jenna, my, my fellow sister in the fight. And, you know, here's the deal. You know, the thing about this whole Twitter war and everything that's going on, in light of everything, we knew back in 2015 we were dealing with this grant. This is the continuation saga of the story to do anything to undermine the greatest president that, that ever sat in that Oval Office that kept his promise grant. He ran on a campaign. And, folks, everyone listen. Remember back his key component, the key nucleus behind President Donald J. Trump was when he promised to not be beholden to special interest and paid to play. Ladies and gentlemen, this is unraveling more and more. And by the way, this is applicable to all folks, Republican or Democrat, who are trading their seats to pay to play and compromising the great American citizens of this great country to benefit themselves, to profit themselves. It, it, it's all across Congress. It's all across Senate. So this is the cleansing, Grant. This is the awakening. The great thing about the craziness about Twitter and everything is that we'll uprise more and more competitive social media platforms that are like, like this great news station here that's rising and growing leaps and bounds because of all the fake crazy news. So I'm very optimistic that we're going to see some great competitors going to rise out of this mess, but it's not going to stop the president. You can see the, the, the fake polling out there. Grant, we well, went through Bruce, this in 15 and 16. <laughs> Bruce, when you see what the president is up against compared to social media, you've got Twitter, you've got the mainstream media, and now, Jenna Ellis, we've got the debate rules changing. Literally, this debate, history has said it's about foreign policy. Well, they want to protect Joe Biden so he doesn't have to talk about China and, and foreign policy. They're saying you can cut mics off. They want to do that because they know the president will get the best of them. What do you make of all this, Jenna? 
It's completely absurd. And it just shows, like my colleague Michael Glasner at the campaign wrote a great op-ed last week that was uh, saying that the debate commission might as well just come out and endorse Joe Biden, because clearly they're doing everything that they can to try to prefer him as the candidate. And what's so interesting is now that this story about, you know, a businessman who's an international businessman actually had his corporation have a bank account in China. Shocking, right? Uh, I wonder if Kristen Welker will ask about that and say, oh, no, no, but that's not about foreign policy and yet refuse to ask Joe Biden the tough question. So tomorrow night, we're going to see yet again, it will be two on one and the president is going to go in and he understands this, of course. He is the master at speaking to the American people and yep. really uh, yep. showcasing what is going on here and the fake news and how much the Democrats are colluding against him and against the American people, frankly, and against the Constitution and our system of government. So he's going to be the one in the arena tomorrow night holding Joe Biden accountable and pinning him down and saying, you have to answer these questions because the American people deserve it. President Trump is and has been a citizen president who has fought for four years on behalf of the American people. He will continue to fight. And I'm really looking forward to that tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, I can't wait oh, for I it. Can't. Bruce, I'm going to give you the last word. If you were advising the president about how to handle this debate tomorrow, if you can do it in about 20 seconds, uh, I want to hear your thoughts on what the president <laughs> should do tomorrow. I wish I had an hour. Listen, just keep being who you are. Keep being who we elected to be in that highest office of this great nation, Mr. President. Keep being who you are. Just because they ask you a question doesn't mean you have to answer their question. You go out there, and if you have to bring up the dirty dealings of the Biden campaign and the Biden family, so be it. We, this yeah. is a true resurrection and a living, breathing American revolution. Thank God that you're there. Keep rolling with it. I know you're watching this. We're with you. The prayers are there because we know that God's got this and you're there for a reason. So just keep well, trucking. That's exactly what I would tell Grant Stinchfield. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, Jenna Ellis, Bruce LaBelle, it's great advice from both of you. Uh, Mr. President, knock them dead tomorrow. All right, folks. Uh, we do have a little bit more on that breaking news. You know, the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, now saying that Iran and Russia meddling with the election, even sending out emails under the, quote, Proud Boy's name to try to hurt President Trump here. We'll have a soundbite from John Ratcliffe. Let's roll it. We would like to alert the public that we have identified that two foreign actors, Iran and Russia, have taken specific actions to influence public opinion relating to our elections. First, we have confirmed that some voter registration information has been obtained by Iran and separately by Russia. All right, so they have the voter information. Why do they do that? So they can target voters in a way to make them go out and vote the way they want them. Clearly, when you hear that they're sending out emails on behalf of the, quote, Proud Boys, they're trying to hurt the president here. Uh, this is another bombshell revelation, and again, it will not stop the attacks on the president, whether it's from here at home or whether it's from foreign actors. We'll continue to follow this story. Coming up, media malpractice, a preview and some insight on what is shaping up to be a huge political hit job on the president. 60 Minutes is our focus of media malpractice. That after the break. I was nine.